Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, practicing general internist and liaison to ACIP, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to ACP's 2021 Adult Immunization Video Series. The topic, what you need to know about Janssen's new COVID vaccine. We now have a third COVID-19 vaccine. Janssen's AD26 cov 2 s viral vector vaccine. FDA authorized on February 27th for emergency use in those 18 and older. Janssen is the pharmaceutical arm of Johnson & Johnson. First there was Pfizer, then Moderna, both are mRNA vaccines. Janssen's vaccine makes three, but it's a viral vector vaccine, a completely different technology platform, and it has several advantages that make it very convenient. First, it's a single dose. One dose and you're done. That means you don't have to take off work for a second time for that second dose, and one dose also means only one set of side effects, and there are some. Most commonly, pain at the injection site, headache, fatigue, and muscle aches. Symptoms are more severe and younger as compared to older patients. Symptoms usually resolve within one to two days. Sound familiar? Deja vu mRNA? Next, vaccine storage is much, much easier. It's what we're used to. No fancy super freezers. All you need is a regular refrigerator. The Janssen vaccine can be transported and stored for up to three months at regular refrigerator temperatures. That's two to eight degrees C. Also, doses don't have to be diluted, which means one less step before putting vaccine into arms. And I really like that. And it works. Study results far exceeded FDA's bar of at least 50% efficacy. Janssen's COVID vaccine is 66.3% effective overall at preventing symptomatic COVID just 14 days after a single dose. It maintained at least 63% effectiveness across age, sex, race, and ethnic categories, and also for those with underlying medical conditions. Janssen's phase three study was conducted at the height of the pandemic, and it's huge. It included more than 40,000 participants, scanning three continents and eight countries. Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, South Africa, and the USA. It was effective across world regions like Brazil and South Africa, where variant coronavirus strains of concern had already emerged. Efficacy did vary geographically. It was highest in the U.S., 74.4% effective, and lowest in South Africa at 52%, where B1351 variant dominated. For preventing hospitalization, Janssen efficacy results were much higher, 100% effective by day 28. That's right, 100%. No hospitalizations occurred in the vaccine group 28 days or more after vaccination, as compared to 16 people hospitalized in the placebo group. That's powerful. What's more, there were no COVID-associated deaths in those who were vaccinated. That's life-saving. I know you may be thinking about Janssen's 66% effectiveness and comparing it to Pfizer and Moderna's 94 to 95% home run, but don't, don't do it. That's like comparing apples to oranges. The respective trials took place at different calendar times and in different locations. The Pfizer and Moderna trials took place early in the pandemic. When it came time for the Janssen trial, the background COVID incidence was higher with more variants circulating, including variants of concern that can increase transmissibility and disease severity. Simply said, for Janssen's vaccine, the test conditions were harder. With viral vector vaccines, you take a weakened version of the virus, which is the viral vector, then genetically engineer it to make coronavirus spike proteins in the body, which then trigger an immune response. Janssen's vaccine uses a modified cold virus, an adenovirus called AD26 as the viral vector. Several genes have been removed from it, making it replication incompetent, so it cannot multiply in the body. The genes in the vaccine cannot incorporate into human DNA. 
The virus is basically dead. The vaccine cannot give someone COVID. The Janssen vaccine contains no adjuvants, no antibiotics, and no preservatives. Here's a heads up. It does contain polysorbate, which can cause cross-reactive hypersensitivity in those allergic to PEG, polyethylene glycol, an ingredient in both mRNA vaccines and also in Miralax and several colonoscopy preps. The same contraindications and precautions for mRNA vaccines also apply to this new viral vector vaccine. There's a large body of research supporting Janssen's vaccine platform. More than 193,000 people, including patients of different age groups and conditions, elderly, children, as well as pregnant and lactating persons have been vaccinated with AD26-based vaccines during study of vaccine candidates for Zika, HPV, RSV, and HIV. In July 2020, an ad-based Ebola virus vaccine was approved in Europe. We have to keep thinking out of the box on how to stay ahead of this virus. Vaccine researchers are. Moderna's already working on a booster for the South Africa variant. Pfizer may study an mRNA vaccine using a variant sequence. Janssen has already started a two-dose study to see if two doses of its single-dose vaccine work better than one. Janssen may also try adding an adjuvant. More to come. Here's what to tell your patients. We have three COVID-19 vaccines. All three are safe and effective. ACIP has expressed no preference for any of these authorized vaccines. Get vaccinated as soon as you can and when it's your turn. Take whichever one is available. In the vaccine trials of all three vaccines, no one who received a COVID vaccine died from COVID. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer.